Hello guys and welcome to another video and this one is pretty much going to be all about this formula V2.5. I got this wheel about a month ago so I just decided to share my thoughts and opinions and if this wheel is actually worth getting or not. So let's begin. I got mine on the Black Friday sale for 350 euros with a quick release system included, which was a pretty good deal. The Formula V2.5 retains the classic 270mm club sport formula wheel shape while adding the solid carbon fiber front plate, magnetic shifter modules and leather grips. So with the pre-installed club sport magnetic pedal module, changing gears just feels incredible. Thumb encoders, toggle switches and multiple position switches are among the controls on the steering wheel. So there could be up to 67 direction controls on the wheel. And from my experience, I only probably use half of that, if so. The two flag LED bars each have three multicolor LEDs that can show tire slip, flag warnings, pit limiter and more. It also comes with the interchangeable quick release system. This wheel is compatible with the new QR2 quick release system, but I have to say I got QR1 or quick release system one that came in the package with the wheel. It just added an additional value to the overall experience, making it much easier to change from one wheel to another. And trust me, it's easier. It's much, much easier. And now let's talk about the driving experience that I had with this wheel. So it has been pretty amazing so far. And I mean, you always need to start with the settings so you can go to the Fanastec website and install all of the necessary drivers it's pretty much a straightforward process and it only takes a couple of minutes I have a detailed video about the settings which I'm gonna post in the link down in the description so make sure that you check it out but when I'm starting with the settings there is one thing that I like to start with sensitivity being the first one or degree of rotation as I would call it simple as that it makes the wheel turn more or less in regards to what's happening in the game so for most of the games I like to leave it at auto because it's just make, gonna make it automatic and you don't have to worry about anything but if you don't have a supported wheel just make sure that your wheel in game is matching your inputs in real life so just make sure that you both kind of combine together you can get into the cockpit view and check that out so just simply turn the wheel and it's going to show if the wheel rotation matches the one in game in this one i will not go to every single setting out there i mean i just decided to kind of explain the two and the other ones are force feedback and force so i usually put that to 100 and change it in game so leave it at 100 i know you can change the force to about 120 but leave it at 100 and adjust your in-game settings i think this way you will get a better perception of what's going on with the wheel and what settings do you need to change and what you don't really want to change just to mention one thing i'm using a gtdd pro wheelbase and if you're using something else then you will have to readjust your settings according to your base like a podium one so moving up and down with the force or the force feedback setting in game leave it at 100 on the wheel but now it's time to drive or probably the best experience that I had with this wheel and it's pretty interesting So I just decided it's Lago Maggiore here centrally reverse section. Let's use a GTR Okay with the overall driving experience. I'm not I'm not always looking at how much force is the wheel producing or the wheelbase I'm just looking for that direct force feedback uh, inputs so when I'm going onto the track, I'm not usually looking for how strong is the wheelbase. I'm mostly looking at how much details is the wheelbase going to give me, so I can react when I need to. I mean, it's always going to be a little bit different, it's always going to depend on the game you're playing, but I do like the feel when you're getting over the curbs, for example. I can actually feel the curbs, but with some wheels, it might be a bit difficult. I mean, my... oof, okay. It's, it's better like that so you know when to react and when to apply more or less force. And that's, that's something that I really value when it comes to wheels. So this wheel is pretty light so far. I mean, if you ever tested another Fanatec wheels that have a that have a podium module on, that's a different kind of uh, different kind of wheel. It's much heavier, and in, from my experience, I've tested a, a couple of times, it might be it might be too too lazy. So when you're getting from one side to another, it really takes a bit of force to move it around. But this wheel is super light, so you don't need high uh, force feedback settings to make it, uh, you know, just to make it usable or just to feel all of those things on the wheel. Or 
and on the track so as you can see when I'm going over the curbs I always know that I'm going over the curbs because it's giving me the, that little rumble feeling and I can always correct the car when I need to so that's something that I really value when it comes to wheels and almost like maybe in two laps I'm kind of matching up with my time already so and just as I said before mo most of most of the people think it's like about the force that the wheelbase and the wheel are given to you but I do stand on a different side of that I always say that I need the information that the wheelbase and the wheel are giving me not the strength but the signal so I can react in every single moment it doesn't have to be strong it just has to be precise and direct that mostly just to make sure that you understand this it mostly comes from the wheelbase but if the wheel is too heavy you will need more force but this wheel is pretty light and it's quite easy to handle so you don't need a lot of force to feel all of the details and this is pretty much why i always say you don't need a strong wheelbase it just needs to have a clear and direct force feedback signal so you can react in time but yeah I think I want to stop here, so we can see that just like in a couple of laps I've managed to get up to close to my personal best on the track. A 43.6 is my personal best and I've done a 43.7 in just about a couple of laps. So I'm always, I'm always looking for a wheel that's going to give me precise direct information and that I can always react to a certain point. So if the car is understeering I can easily correct it, if the car is oversteering I can do the same. So I'm always looking at for those little details and not the pure force of the wheel. There's hardly much to say about this experience other than it's absolutely fantastic. So I tested several other wheels over the last couple of months, several other wheel bases, and I just have to say that this thing feels amazing. So there is absolutely nothing that would stop me from buying this wheel again. So I don't track the force feedback, but the feeling while I'm going over the curbs. So understeer and oversteer, it's pretty much all that I'm looking for. So if I get the reaction time on point, if I do have the direct information, this is the wheel that I'm getting. So don't get me wrong, this might not be the only wheel that I'm getting, but in general, if the force feedback is direct, this is the wheel that is gonna, you know, that is gonna provide you with all of that consistency and all of that smoothness when it comes to from the wheelbase. So you can relate to the force feedback and the strength of the wheel, but it's mostly about details and it's not about the force. So just to conclude and just to finalize this one, there's nothing much that would stop me from buying this wheel again. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and until the next time, bye.